Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Nikki, and welcome to the It's All Mental podcast, where there is something for everybody. So I'm super excited because this is the first episode of this podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. I'm a little nervous, but we're going to make you do what it do. So today I have a special guest with me. This is one of my closest <laughs> and dearest friends, Avia. Let's welcome Avia to the podcast. What's up? Yeah. What's up? <laughs> super excited about being here. I'm super excited that you are starting this new journey and it is here to help people. Like she said, there's something for everyone. So let's get to it. All right, you guys. So today we are going to be talking about grief. So mm. the title of today's video is Grief Doesn't Stop at Death. So I feel like Avi and I have something in common when mm-hmm. it comes to grief because I feel like one of our connections was the passing of our dads. And yeah. that was one of the things that really brought us closer together Mm -hmm. along with other journeys that we were embarking on together yeah so i want to ask you first of all what does grief mean to you like how would you define grief grief is grief to me it's not very steady i i like to think um grief to me is it comes in like it's almost like a roller coaster it comes Mm -hmm. in like form it comes in motions it's like one minute i can be completely fine and in the next minute i'm not grief starts at different times for me like when my father passed away i don't think i grieved immediately i think i grieved maybe a couple years after my father started passing well after he passed away and um it was just it was a different type of sadness that i felt and I started learning about like the different stages of grief and my stages were all out of whack, <laughs> you know, like they, I think they're like right. five stages. I can't tell you what every single stage is, but like, I feel like I first started in like acceptance, which was denial. You know what right. I'm saying? I think at first, like at first, like I was like, yep, this happened. This is okay. Like this is, this is a thing. This is happening. And I'm like, I can do this. I'll be okay. <laughs> and little did I know that that was a denial. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't know the stages that you're going through. You don't know like when it's going to hit you. I always compare grief to like a broken bone. Like you mm-hmm. feel things emotionally. Like when you break a bone or you have any type of injury, when you have a type of injury and it heals, You know what I'm saying? Like it gets to a point where it gets better, but it never forms quietly the same as it was before. It was, it's never whole the way that it was before. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, you know, like you'll heal and things will get better and the pain lessens. But when you have a cold day, you know what I'm saying? Or Mm -hmm. when the rain pours, you feel that ache all Mm -hmm. over again. And you want to take something to to get rid of that pain and remembering like, dang, I'm how I was before this this major injury happened. Mm -hmm. You know, your emotional state is a lot like your physical state. Your body really can't tell the difference, you know. Yeah. And so I compare it to to breaking a bone. So to wrap up what we're saying, like grief to me, it's just it comes in different ways. You know, like it's one minute you'll, you'll be fine. And then the next minute, like a broken bone, you know. When that rain, well, when that wind blows a little too chilly, when that rain pours a little too much, you know what I'm saying? You feel the ache. You Mm -hmm. feel it. Yeah. And it's crippling sometimes. That's true. I agree with what you're saying. Like, I feel like for me, the stages were out of whack as well and losing my dad. Like, Mm -hmm. I think I was kind of prepared for it because... He was in the hospital and like we kind of got the call that things took a turn for the worse. So I kind of felt in my gut like the worst is what's going to happen. So I really kind of prayed for God to prepare me for the worst. I know a lot of people would be like, oh, you shouldn't think like that. You should think God's going to work miracles. But, um, you know, we forget that God works miracles here and in heaven as well. So absolutely, I asked God to truly prepare me mm-hmm. for that moment. Mm-hmm. And he did. And But it took me some time to grieve. It took mm-hmm. me a year to really, really grieve that mm-hmm. loss. 
And it wasn't until therapy that I actually learned how to grieve because I had such a mindset of, okay, I got to be strong. This is going to be okay. Right. Like right. I just had this mindset of just like, oh, well, I pray for God to, to make it all right and help me get through this. So I'm going to get through it. And then it was like, boom, it just hit me. Like immediately after my emotions all over the place. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to feel. I'm sad. I'm like, I'm, I just didn't know. Like I felt like a ball in a box, just shaking yeah. all over the place. And I didn't know how to really grieve. Right. So it wasn't until therapy where I really learned how to grieve. And it took me a year. Like, I went through all of these emotions and just happy, sad one day, depressed, didn't really want to go anywhere, didn't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. Then was at a point where I was forcing myself to do things just so that I wouldn't stay in that state of mind. But mm -hmm. I wasn't really coping. I wasn't really healing and mm -hmm. helping myself. But I truly agree when you said grief is like, it's never consistent. It hits mm -hmm. you at different times and different moments it right. could be a memory a song mm -hmm. or anything that smell. hits you yeah a smell mm -hmm. and it hits you and you're just like back in that you right, <laughs> right, right, back, right, right back to where you were before right back where you were before mm -hmm. and just boom like ah like there it is so I, I definitely think like like you think when it comes to defining grief like mm -hmm. so what are some of the ways that you cope with your grief like how does how do you kind of get your mind back from being in that sad yeah. dark place to it's a kind of find a light again it's definitely a process because i have not mastered <laughs> you know like <laughs> grief at all i've not mastered grief i don't care like i feel like as far as like my personality like when I talk to eat other people, people are always like, Via, you're so strong. Via, I don't know how you would do this because I wouldn't be able to do it. Via, I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you do this. You just, even my my old man called me the, like the soldier. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the truth of the matter is, is I'm not. The truth of the matter is, is that I feel all of these emotions. Mm hmm I'm just good at going out into the world with them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm good going out into the world with them. So it seems like I know how to cope with these things or deal with these things. But the truth is, is that I don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I get, I'm a big person. Um, and you know me, I'm a big person of spirituality. And, and I'm very, very big into Christ. Mm -hmm. And this time around, um, when I'm dealing with my grief, I've been very, very dependent on Christ. And, you know, for someone who may not be close to Jesus, someone who may not be spiritual, may not believe in Jesus, they're probably out there thinking, well, that's not going to help me because I'm not a spiritual person. But this is what I say. Whenever you're alone, if you can be alone, because not everybody can be alone. You know what I'm saying? That's true. That's not everybody really true. can be alone, but I'm a woman who can be alone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if you can be alone, those are the times to let those emotions process. That would be my my give and take. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? When you come into a place, you sit by yourself, you know what I'm saying? And you let the thoughts come on down. You know what I'm saying? You got to let the thoughts come on. Like, and when I say come down, I don't mean stop your thoughts. I mean, let your thoughts go. Like, let them like take on a mind of their own because you're thinking these things anyways. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're thinking about how could this have been different? What could I have done better? You know what I'm saying? How could I have changed the situation? What Lord, if, if this didn't happen, you know, like what could I've done before? How am I supposed to move on now? All of these thoughts are going to like race through your head. Right, basically right yeah. every last one of them are going to end up racing through your head and you just kind of have to sort them out and i'm the type of person where everything can't rest in here you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. if everything rests in here i don't know how it's going to come out so excuse me so i have to take a pen and paper and i have to write those thoughts down in each one of those thoughts i write down um i talk to god about i separate these thoughts because I can't do it in my head. I let them, I let the thoughts come 
and I put it on a piece of paper. Um, and then I, each one of those thoughts, I sit down and I talk to God about like when I recently lost my best friend, you know, Marcelina, when she died, you know, like my first thought was, and it may have been a selfish thought, but it's like, well, what am I supposed to do now? I lost, lost my dad. You know, I had a miscarriage. Now I lost my best friend since the sandbox. I don't know what it is, what else it is you want me to do. <laughs> you know what I'm right, saying? Right. You're taking all of the things that I thought had a future with me. You know what I'm saying? You're taking some of my strongest warriors. So what, mm. what is it that you need me to do? What is it that you want me to do? What is it that you want me to see? You know? And the truth is, is you know, I don't have the answers to that because this grief is a process. And I think through all of this, what God is trying to tell me to do is just trust him build that relationship again and trust him. I don't believe for a second that, you know, God took all of these things away from me to trust him. These things are going to happen whether I trusted God or not, whether I was in a relationship with God or whether I wasn't right. in a relationship with yeah. God, these were going to happen. I was going to suffer no matter what, because everybody has a time. Everybody has mm -hmm. a time. We don't like that time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we don't like that time. We don't appreciate that time. We, you know, this is something wild because we imagined our lives living with our loved ones mm -hmm. forever. Right, right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We imagined our, our, our dads to be old men. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I imagine when I, the first time that I was, uh, well, when I was pregnant to be giving birth to a full blown child. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I imagine my best friend being there during my wedding. You know what I'm saying? When I start my new businesses and mm -hmm. I have so many dreams that I had with her, with them, you know, and all of a sudden these, now this has been taken from me and now I have to process my life of those dreams again. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And so those, those are the types of thoughts that like run through my head. But when I'm sitting down and I'm trying to process these thoughts of grief, I literally like what I have to do is I have to write them down and I have to pray on each one. You know, I have to be able to separate my thoughts because if they're all jumbled together, it, I literally can't do nothing with it. Mm -hmm. I have anxiety. I'm going to be up all night. I'm going to be crying. And I know that there are times where God is like, slow down, slow down. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Take a breath, write it out. It's okay. Let these things come, but deal with it in portions because you mm -hmm. can't take everything on your plate at once. You know what I'm saying? And then some of the thoughts that you're going to have don't belong in your head at all. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like these thoughts are going to come, but some of them don't belong because then like one of the biggest things that people do who are grieving they have a tendency to blame themselves, even if it was out of their control, they have a tendency to blame themselves for what had happened. Like even with Marcelina, if I encouraged her to go to the doctor more, if I would have been, you know, on her behind more, if I would have been doing this, could this have, could it have prevented, mm -hmm. you know, her loss basically. But that's, that's not the truth because her relationship with Christ and, you know, that's a whole separate thing. Her relationship with God and God, like, that's a whole separate thing against, you know, from my relationship with God. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There was a time where I do believe that suffering does stop. You know what I'm saying? Especially for her, that suffering does stop. Does stop. And, you know, as Christian women, we, you know, we believe that, you know, once we go and we believe, you know, once we profess Christ and everything like that. We are in heaven with God and, you know, we're healed on the other side. Right. But then, you know, you got us left over here. <laughs> and we're like, <laughs> you know, sometimes like, <laughs> this ain't what we talked about, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is not what we talked about at all. But the truth of the matter is being able to process the things that happen. You know, I feel every single emotion. I'm not as strong as people think I am. I, I just know how to carry myself outside of my house well. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I know how to carry myself outside of my house well. And I like to sit alone in my own thoughts. And that's where the tears come. 
That's where the questions with God come. That's where I sit and I'm just feeling everything. It is so important to feel every emotion that you right. have. And people don't understand what it means to feel an emotion. Basically, if you are angry, be angry. You know what I'm saying? No one is telling you that you can't be angry. If you're sulking today, sulk today. Mm -hmm. You don't have to win today. Today is not yours to be won. I know that that seems so opposite, you know, of what people tell us because, you know, victory is mine. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Victory is absolutely yours. But this victory is not necessarily in this moment in time. It's not yours. Mm -hmm. It's God's. Right. There are days where you have got to hand it over to God. There are days where you have got to depend on God. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, God, I have days I'm like, Lord, if you don't do this for me, this is not about to happen. <laughs> This is not Same. about to happen. Same. This is not about to happen at all. Like you, like you, you've got to. Like I'm about to go. I'm about to go take a nap. Jesus, like this is it for me. <laughs> I'm taking all I can take right now, and I'm about to go take a nap. And sometimes it's just like let God deal with it. You yeah. don't have to win every day that you have, every mm -hmm. day that you live. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be on top every day that you live some days people don't and it's not a good thing I, I say it's not a good thing to tell people but it's not the typical thing to tell people you don't have to win you don't have to have victory today well because we live in christ we're always going to have victory but it's a different type of victory of our souls and of knowing and coming to know jesus christ but while we are here on this side of this realm you know what i'm saying like while we're here right now there are days it is not number one. It is we are That's not true. on top. Yeah, we are mm -hmm. not on top emotionally. We are down, 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 and it is okay. It is okay to be down. It is okay to be this low to this small sometimes. Look, girl, there are days I just, honey, I'm not cute at all. I'm about to go. <laughs> I'm about to go take a nap. That's what I'm about to do. I'm about to go take a nap. Like, if I don't have it, like, that's it for me. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's not to say to give up on, you know, on what you're feeling. It's just feel what you're feeling. And if that feeling causes you to soak today, soak today. You ain't got to be the best daggone person. You're not the best person. You know what I'm saying? Right. I have to yeah. tell myself that. And I think that's, like, highly um, arrogant of me, honestly. I'm starting to notice that about myself, you know, when I'm becoming this new woman that I'm becoming anyways, mm -hmm. I notice that I'm very arrogant about certain things as far as like, I can deal with this. No, I cannot. And half of the things I tell myself that I can deal with, I was never supposed to deal with to begin with. You know what I'm saying? I can only deal with what is given to me. And if what, if That's my true. grief yeah. is given to me, then I know well enough that I can deal with this. Mm-hmm. But in order to do it, it's not just pushing it down and doing what you got to do. It's feeling it. And I feel my emotions. I don't necessarily feel those emotions in front of other people because I'm not comfortable showing my emotions like that in front of it. And maybe that's another growing point on my behalf, but I'm not comfortable showing my emotions like that in front of other people. But I am finally confident enough where I can sit down and, and cry to God. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like I'm, I am finally gotten to the point where I could sit here and be like, this ain't working out for me, Jesus. You know, like I expected mm -hmm. this. I expected that. I expected this. And to really just invite Christ into your area and honey, just weep. Sometimes it's all you can do is just cry about it. You know, that's true. That's true. One thing that I kind of started to not do which like you know we hear the typical like don't question god god doesn't make mistakes and don't ever put a question mark where god put a period and i had that mindset in the beginning of my grief of like mm -hmm. okay god i'm not gonna question you this is what happens i have to accept it mm -hmm. but i know you're gonna help me get through it mm -hmm. and throughout the process of grieving i learned like you know there is nothing wrong with asking God, like, God, why why did this happen? Like, and like, why? And with that, 
you know, when you lose something, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's a period. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like your your father's death isn't a period in your life. It's not God's boop, let it go. Right. That's not a period on your life. That's a period coming to your father's life because now he has moved on. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But that's not a period of your life. That's not a bing bong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? End of the sentence. Like this God did not meet the four point sentences right there. You know, <laughs> funny. Quick lesson in a four-point sentence as a teacher. You got your capital letter. You got your finger spaces. You got to make sure your sentence makes sense. And then you put your period up there. You understand? <laughs> Just because yeah. your father's sentence has ended doesn't mean your sentence is done. Now, we want to make sure while we're going through life that we got complete sentences and not mean run-on sentences. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, like, my point I'm saying is, you know, That point of your life, I don't believe anyways, was a period. So you can put a question. That might have been a period to your father's story. Mm-hmm. But you should be able to put a question mark where it's left you. Because it doesn't mean your story's done yet. You have to deal with that later on. You know what I'm saying? You have to, to, to deal with the loss later on. Yeah. And I think that it's okay to, to question God sometimes, you know, not necessarily because I'm a big believer in, you know, well, we can't question his ways either or, do, you know, doing what God does. But if I don't understand something, honey, if I truly don't understand it, I'm asking God the questions. My God, why? Like, uh, what does I am this asking, mean? Yes, <laughs> Where do you I want am, me to go from here? Exactly. <laughs> I am asking God the questions 100 percent because I don't understand. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe it's not meant for me to understand, but Lord, I got to have some type of understanding. Like I'm trying, I am on your side, Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that you are on my side <laughs> and I'm simply just sitting here trying to understand all of this, Yeah, you know, and maybe, I don't know, you know, I don't really have all of the answers, but you know, maybe that's another growing point of becoming a christian well of being a christian but i feel like if i got some questions to the lord i'm gonna ask i mean he Definitely. was the one who said ask and you shall receive i just want to answer <laughs> <laughs> you know true. what i'm saying that's true and i feel like god when we ask questions like he will answer us in many different ways and mm-hmm. sometimes we may not get an answer and i feel like Even with my grief, it has shaped my perspective a lot of my future. Like, Mm -hmm. my father was a very, very important figure in my life. Mm -hmm. So now I'm thinking, like, okay, God, well, I don't think I, if I ever get married, I don't really want a wedding. Like, I'm not going to have the typical daddy walk me down the aisle, the father daughter dance, when I have my baby. Like, he's not going to be here, Mm -hmm. you know. But within that, I've also learn a big important lesson that just because he's not here physically he's here spiritually and Mm -hmm. i feel his presence show up at the most like craziest times when i really need him the most and it could be a day where my anxiety is just high and i'm just feeling down in the dumps and i really just want someone to talk to and just really just just make me feel something that something good. I just need something good for that day. Mm-hmm. And I just think of something that he would say, mm-hmm. or I would just see his face, hear his laugh. And just even some of the materialistic items that I have now of his that I just kind of touch and it just gives me little flashbacks and things like it's a, it's a comfort. Like so it's something you can't explain unless you've experienced. It's like a comfort, mm-hmm. like no other, like, And that's why I feel like, you know, even with God, like our Heavenly Father, like he can comfort us in a way that physically people can't. Like it's it's a different type of comfort. It really is. It really is. Um, It's definitely a difference of of comfort. That's for sure. Because like what God brings you, especially if I feel like if you're close to God, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, some people, people don't truly open up to God. I think Mm -hmm. people have a tendency to complain a lot, you know, about what God already knows. 
you know, so that I think that's why it's really important to invite Christ into your space. And half the time, when I'm in it, girl, a lot of times I don't even talk. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't even talk. Sometimes I'm getting to the point where I know God knows everything I know. And I don't know if I can speak on this stuff anymore. I don't know if I can sit here and tell you how sad I am anymore. So, like, sometimes it's just the emotions you know what let that heart letting your heart well up and just letting it go you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying letting it letting it come on out letting it pour out of you and letting yourself cry and sometimes honey i mean literally girl i'll be it, <laughs> girl i will be up in my apartment i'll be like Whoo! you know what i'm saying like i won't say nothing at all i'll just be out there wailing sometimes that's why i was like i'm way more emotional than what people um think i am um but it's a lot sometimes. It really, it really, really is. Mm -hmm. Man, is. girl, grief is is something else, <laughs> you is. know. And it really does come to you in different waves and different um, emotions. And you know, and I think that people would rather not feel grief. I mean, nobody wants to feel grief. It's mm -hmm. terrible. It is terrible to feel grief because then when you start grieving something, it's never a moment. You know what? It, it does come in moments, but it's not just for a moment. Right. You got to deal with that grief for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. and that's what people don't tell you. You got yes, to deal with grief ends. for the rest of your life. <laughs> that's true. And time, baby, I, I don't care. This is this is a me thing. This is a via thing. I do not believe time heals all. I believe that with time, things get better to deal with. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes. I believe mm -hmm. time, things are easier to deal with mm -hmm. pain is a little bit easier to deal with you know what i'm saying but there's no way that i'm healed you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying like i don't think that this loss of losing daddy of losing marcelina will ever leave me you know what i'm saying it's been mm -hmm. almost 10 years since daddy passed away and literally just yesterday the one keep one thing i just kept thinking about I miss my daddy. I miss my daddy. Mm -hmm. I miss my daddy. It's never, you know, not to, I, and I hope that doesn't discourage people. Excuse me. It's just, it's not going to stop. But time does offer you different chances to be able to deal with certain things. So like you said, to be able to cope. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, I, I've never believed that whole time heals all. No, it doesn't. Time makes thing, makes you cope better. <laughs> but you are definitely still going to feel it. You know what I'm saying? Like That's you're going to feel it. It just is what it is, and there's no getting away. There's no getting around it, honey. You just have to. You now have to operate your life as a new being. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe when we lose people and we go through these stages of grief, grief, we become a new person. Right. Not right. necessarily a new being. You know, the only time we can become a new being is when we are in Christ. But we become a new person and we're all, we're always different people. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I am not the same person I was. I can tell you right now, I am not the same person I was two months ago. I'm not the same person I was a year ago. Like, yes, do I have certain characteristics, things that I still need to heal from? Absolutely. But at every turn, my mind, my thought process has changed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the older I'm getting, honey, it's like, get up out of my face, <laughs> child. Get out of my face, honey. I don't stop talking to me. <laughs> I don't feel like dealing with your mess, honey. I'm in my 30s. That's Leave true. me alone. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that That's could just true. be, that could be an adult thing. I think every year, every 10 years, we have another change. We're never the same people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We grow. Yeah. At least We're I never... feel like you should be. Exactly. Not... <laughs> well, I do question. Like, I do question if you stay in the same. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. if you're staying the same, like, you be that type of person. <laughs> oh, I'm real. I have this thought process since I was 16. I'm like, you've been holding down since you were 16 like this, baby. <laughs> it might be time to start thinking about different options. You know what I'm saying? It might be time to start thinking about different things, you know, because you shouldn't be the same. Mm -hmm. You should not be processing things. I don't care if you were the strongest soldiers, 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 okay? 
you should not be process, processing things the same way you did when you were 16. Exactly. That's, that's, that's <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we got to be able to move on from that. You are supposed to change. Sometimes mm-hmm. you're going to change for worse, and sometimes you're going to change for the better. And people try to make you feel that changing for the worse is this, especially when you're going through things. You know what I'm saying? People try to make you feel bad. But people go through changes, and not mm-hmm. all of them are good. You know, it's a, it's a thing where you have to bring yourself out of. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I know I wasn't always the best person, you know, going through certain things and dealing with certain people. I know I'm not always the best person. There's always something that I can do better. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I just feel like that's where grace comes in. And half the time we lack grace for one another, you know, and grace for ourselves, Mm -hmm. you know, where we over here trying to be this real person, this, this constant figure, you know what I'm saying? Where sometimes honey, you just got to let the, 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 the crumbles fall. Yeah. And it's okay to. Let them fall. Yeah, it's it okay to. <laughs> it 100% is okay to let those crumbles fall sometimes, you know, and uh, try to piece yourself back together. It ain't easy. You it's know what not, I'm saying? It's, it's not, not. It's not easy. It's not at all. And you're not the best person. You're not going to be the best person. I think it's weird to try to be. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to be the best person ever. I'm going to... No, no, no. I know I'm not a nice person some days. I know I'm not. And I'm a teacher. You know what I'm saying? I go in there with them daggone kids and I'm there. Girl! Especially when you grieving. And you got to go to, to umpteen many six to seven year olds in your face calling you every two seconds. Every two daggone seconds, child, I just be like, teacher life is, is something else now. It's it's real. It's real out here in these teacher streets. It's real out here in these teacher streets. <laughs> it is real. And when you're going through things, and then honey, and you get every different type of personality, they make you want to grieve in itself. <laughs> they make you want to grieve right by itself, like dog. <laughs> That's wrong. I love being a teacher. You know what I'm saying? But honey, I'm trying to tell you when you going through. And you got a bunch of kids running up behind you, honey. It, it does not make it easy. It, it doesn't. It, it does not make it easy at all, honey. And you just be like, sit down. <laughs> what do you need? Why do you need? I've showed you this problem several different times and you don't understand it. Intervention plan. No, I'm playing. But why? <laughs> no, I'm playing. But like, it's, it's just. <laughs> Girl, if when you're going through and you just got to deal with life outside of what you're going through, is what I'm trying to get, what I'm trying to get to saying. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, difficult. It is. It's a challenge. It's difficult. It's not easy to be the best person, and you got to go out here and deal with life, right, by right. itself. Let alone the stuff that's happening inside your house. Let alone mm-hmm. the things that's happening inside your head. You got to go out there. You got to go back to work. Mm-hmm. You got to deal with stubborn people. And some days, you know what I'm saying? You're just not going to be the best version of you. Mm-hmm. And that is okay. And we do it in relationships, doing everything. And that's just what, it's just what grace is for. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You have to, when you're feeling like that, you have to show yourself grace. You do. And I was telling my cousin, my cousin, um, she posted on Facebook and she had put up there, I'm just so mad today. I'm so irritated. I'm in such a mood and I don't know why. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You At least you've recognized those. Mm-hmm. And I told her, it's 100% okay to feel that way. Be patient with yourself today. Show yourself grace today. Right. Because a lot of times other people ain't going to show you grace. You know what I'm saying? But you got to show yourself grace. You got to show yourself grace. You it's know important. better than anybody else that in this moment in time, you are not the best to you. It's all right. You ain't got to be the best you every day. That's what I was saying before. You don't have to win today. Mm-hmm. This victory wasn't yours to win. It's all right. We don't win all them victories, honey. We don't That's win all them true. battles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You just got to be able to, you know, when you lose a battle, what can you learn from that battle? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you weren't your best self today and you were an asshole, you know what I'm saying? So like maybe the kids, maybe your partner, you know, maybe you weren't kind to yourself. Now that you've lost this battle and it's just been done, what things can you do differently? Right. It's all right to lose your battle sometimes, mm-hmm. honey. It's just it's so important that you allow yourself grace. So 
That's true. And that's just what it is, girl. Now, we've been talking about grief in the sense of losing someone through mm-hmm. death. I believe that you can grieve people who are still here. You can grieve relationships, friendships, people that have walked out of your life, not in the physical sense, but mm-hmm. maybe the relationship is done. So mm-hmm. how do you feel about that? And do you feel like you have to mourn those relationships and those friendships as well like you would a normal grief? Absolutely. You you take in the same, again, your body doesn't know the differences. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The only reason why your body, the only reason why you know the difference is because you have a brain that has thoughts and you can think. You know right. what I'm saying? But your body doesn't know the differences. Your body doesn't know the difference between you losing your dad or you losing your boyfriend in this relationship. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You still go through those grieving moments. You know, when I lost, when I lost my ex, and girl, you already know the story. <laughs> we ain't gonna get into that, y'all. But we are, that's you are story, that's, that's story. I don't know if I'm about to put on YouTube. But like, you know, and out of pure love and respect for him, you know what I'm saying? Because you, there was a moment, there's a time, you know what I'm saying, a couple years ago where I ain't had no love and respect for that fella. But <laughs> I do now. And that that comes with healing, you know what I'm saying? And um you do, you grieve the loss of somebody that mm-hmm. you again expect it to be in your future you didn't expect to lose you and you know when you get into a relationship you know what it is you know for the butterflies well, especially yeah. when you know you're with somebody <laughs> that you got a crush on you know that, i mean you have you ever been with somebody and it's gonna sound so sideways but you ever had a crush on somebody and they like reciprocated it back you know what i'm saying and like now it's just all the butterflies y'all mm-hmm. together it's all of the love you know what i'm saying you 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 hold on to that love you know, like you, you hold on to those things. Mm-hmm. And then later on, when you guys start figuring out, like, damn, we're different people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, we're not 100. This mm-hmm. ain't what I thought it was going to be. And right. this relationship ends. You 100% grieve it. I, I 100% grieved my ex. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I sure did. But I, I grieved in weird ways, man. Mine start, my grief started with anger. It started with anger. I'm trying to tell you, girl. And again, you go through these different stages. Why That's why I always feel like with boyfriends, it's anger. Friends. Oh, no, yeah, because it's, un- <laughs> it's, it's unsolved <laughs> issues. It's unsolved issues. That's exactly what it is. Like you didn't solve, like you know, like you didn't solve the problem. Like while y'all were together, and right. you over there, you start banking on and thinking on all the things that have happened, you know what I'm saying? Right. And then you like, oh, you start putting pieces and puzzles together. You're like, oh, I remember when this happened and that son of a bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so, like things just start to just freaking fall apart. But it definitely, it started with anger because you start thinking, it's because it's unsolved issues that are inside mm-hmm. of you. Unsaid things. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you didn't, um, what's the term? Close the door, if you will. There's another term for it, but I can't think of it right now. That's where all the anger comes from. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you're mad and you're just angry. But then, you know, after that anger, what happens? You start missing them. Yeah. Especially you when you love them. them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Especially when you love them. You start missing them. And then what happens when you start, after you start missing them, you start really going back. What could have I done? What could yeah, I, I have done different? Mm-hmm. And it's the same. Really. It's the same steps. It's the same process. And then it finally get to a place where, you know, you're like, okay, well, this happened. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And you How accept do I it. Move on? Mm-hmm. How do I move on? And you got to be able to move on. The Lord knows. I hope he'll never see this because he'd be like, I knew she was thinking of me. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is, you know, and you learn how to you forgive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a big that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. That is something that I used to struggle with because I used to feel like, okay, I forgive, but I ain't really forgave you. Like I, I'm saying that I forgive you because I feel like that's the Christian thing to right. say. But if I could but shake you, if I could shake you and get away with it, I would. 
<laughs> no, no, deep down, no. No. It, it takes time. And that's another, and we can have a whole other pod discussion about forgiveness. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'll give you a quick one, too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People don't tell you that forgiveness is a process. It is. Forgiveness is something you have to practice. Yes. You have to practice. It's like a test. It's like any other test. If you don't practice how to do these things, it is not going to be successful. Mm-hmm. You That's know what right. I'm saying? Like forgiveness is, and it's not just forgiveness for the other person. It's also forgiveness for yourself. Yeah. And people think, and I feel, well, I ain't going to say people do, but I feel like anyways, people think forgiveness for the self is easy, an easy process. But when you really are, you start to sit down and think about the things that you've done and you got to start thinking about the accountability that you hold, that you are holding towards the end of your relationship. So you be like, no, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, no, maybe I, could be? <laughs> couldn't be, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But no, like you really got to start thinking about, you know, the things that you've done. Mm-hmm. and how you messed it up you know yeah, like how yeah. or, you know like you got to start coming to um and start becoming accountable for the things that you've done and it's not easy it's not, and it's being not accountable easy. comes with you know um understanding and it does come with a lot of forgiveness mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying because most people once you got to be accountable for something they get angry right you know what right. i'm saying and it's an, and it nothing but it's nothing but another form of grief Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you get sad when you learn that you're not a good person. You do. You get really people don't talk about that at all. You get really sad when you learn that is you. You know, like you when you learn that. I, I think you should be sad if you find that you're not a good. Well, yeah. Well, you absolutely <laughs> should be sad, but you know people don't realize it. Like, dang. <laughs> I'm a little sad. Now, if you have absolutely no remorse at all, they, mm, they, they, so you know, I don't think it. that people realize, you know, or even said it out loud, like, dang, this was me. And I'm sad about this. Mm-hmm. And now wow. I'm sad about the choices that I've made. Right. And, you know, if you're a critical person, like me, I'm a, I'm very, very critical of myself. Practice of forgiveness of the self is just everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that forgiveness comes with grace. It's all linked to one. It's every, It's all linked to one another, you know? Um, but yeah, learning how to forgive people and learning how to forgive yourself, you know, it's a process. It really is. It's not a, um, that's why you can sit here and say, yep. Yeah, I forgive you, but at the same time, if I could shank you and get away with it, I would. You know what I'm saying? You have not forgiven that person, and that's okay. Yeah. It is the Christian thing to forgive somebody, but what people don't tell you with this Christian lifestyle is that these things are not moments. They are process. You you have to process these things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like It is such a process. You have to go through the steps, and it may take you years to forgive somebody as long as you're on the path to forgiveness Mm -hmm. as long as you're not stuck in this spot where you're angry all of the time you know what i'm saying and you are on the path to forgiveness forgiveness that's why i say you're not going to win every day you're not that's true you're not going to win every day and to think that you're going to win every single battle honey i don't know what type of stuff you sipping on i sure wish i had it you know what i'm saying but like (laughs) that is just not (laughs) going to happen at all and you you do you you have to be able to forgive people for the things that they've done and that's where healing comes from you know like Mm -hmm. once you're able to be like you know what especially when it came to my ex once i got to the point where i was like you know what and and i have no i've had no contact with him at all but you get to a point where you do forgive them and you don't you realize you don't Mm -hmm. really hate them right you know what i'm saying you don't really hate them and this ain't for everybody. Because I know, you know, some people you just can't, they can't do it. But I'm speaking on what I know from my experiences and how I've dealt with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I realized that I didn't hate him. There are a lot of things that I disliked about him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There are a lot of things that I disliked about what he said. There are a lot of things I disliked about what he did. But I don't hate him. And once mm-hmm. you get to a point where you realize that everybody... 
struggles in their own way. Right. You know what I'm saying? Every if anybody's out here at least being decent, a decent enough person, I don't, they're not out here doing lies. They're not out here trying to cheat. They're not out here trying to manipulate you. They're just trying to process this life themselves. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like once you realize that everybody really is just a simple human being, you learn to forgive people. Yeah, that's true. You learn to forgive people. You do. And it's it's better for you because what you're going to do sitting out, sitting around, even with grief, what are you going to do sitting around carrying anger all the time? That's not to say that you can't carry anger for the day that you carry it. You know what I'm saying? But if most of the days you live, if most of the days you get up, you are angrier than anything else, it's time to start questioning the self. Mm -hmm. It's time to start having conversations with God. Even if you feel like you don't hear him. You know what I'm saying? You got to start questioning your your conversations with God. You know, not questioning. You just got to start having those conversations with God and just being patient and a lot of people don't want to be patient a lot of people want to hear now lord knows i do you know what i'm saying if i can billion dollars <laughs> billion dollars if i could like if i could get it I, I definitely would you know what i'm saying but like patience and everything again that's the lesson of today is that it's a process mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying it doesn't matter what you go through whether you you started this new podcast whether you're dealing with grief, whether you're trying to learn how to forgive somebody, nothing happens all at once. You That's know what true. I'm saying? That's right. And to be aware of the days that you're not going to win. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And being able to deal with that because that's another grieving process. Like, you know, you're talking about just not just losing people, but what about losing things? Yeah. Jobs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What about losing jobs? And if you and honey, I'm a little, I hate to say, I, I don't like to think I'm materialistic, but um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if I had something for years, an object for years, yeah, that's, that's some and, crazy. and I get, and I have to get rid of it, <laughs> I'm no hoarder, but you know, I'd be like, oh, I remember when I was five playing on that stand. You know what I'm saying? You throw that thing away. You know? right. <laughs> I'm saying. But you do, you grieve other things. You grieve you grieve the, the failures that you have. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You grieve like the things that, that happen around your life, the things that you lose. And sometimes you grieve the shit that you have. Mm-hmm. It's right there in front of you. You don't know you know what to do with it. Right. right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's grief happens in so many different ways and so many different forms and people don't necessarily know what to do, but you just have to let things process. You have to let things play out. You know what I'm saying? Win what you can win, forgive what you lose. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Forgive what you lose. Have grace with yourself because you're not going to be the best, you know, and take your time. Take your time. People got way more time than what they think. You know, this is where it comes from. The the here now, here now, here now, here now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Billion dollars. It's not going to happen. It's not going to I wish it would happen like that. (laughs) I sure wish it would. We're going to manifest that, though. We're going to manifest it. (laughs) You know I have right now if I can do this? (laughs) I'd be in a different place. I'd be in a different Different world. <laughs> okay. Wouldn't even be here. <laughs> Y'all wouldn't even see you. Wouldn't even know me. <laughs> Where is oh this? Gone. <laughs> Gone. Away from here. Away from here. <laughs> way away from here, honey. Way away from here. It may not solve all the problems, but it should solve a lot. Yeah, we saw a couple. <laughs> we saw the couple. But we can't do that. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So now we, we as these. These fragile human beings, baby, we got to go through the things. We just have to. We do. Well, Mm -hmm. I think this was a great conversation. This was really good. I definitely took some gems away from this because you gave me some different perspectives Mm -hmm. on how I look at grief. So I appreciate you for sitting down with me. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, we have to have you on again. Oh, God, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Honey. I got some things I got to say, honey. I got things I got to say. 
<laughs> at least I thought so. Because it's good to be talking. <laughs> All right. All right, you guys. That wraps up this week's episode of the It's All Mental Podcast. Make sure you guys come back next week for the next episode. Peace.